Here's a chandelier problem for all you people that like interior decorating. It says there's a chandelier just hanging from a cable. And the chandelier, oh boy, there's a drawing challenge for me. Who does the chandelier look like? I suppose it has a lot of lights. <laughs> I think it looks like an upside down Christmas tree myself. Anyway, here it is, the chandelier. And here's what it tells you about the chandelier. It says that the chandelier is supported from the ceiling up above here by a cable, which is originally L is 1.5 meters long. Okay, good. That's nice. What else does it tell you? It says that the chandelier has a mass of 40 kilograms. So then, here's the chandelier's weight, which is mg, and that's 40 kilograms times g, the acceleration due to gravity. Fine, so we know that. So we know the weight. We know the length, originally at least, of this cable that's supporting it. So then, what does it ask for? Well, it says A, knowing the ultimate tensile stress, find the minimum diameter of the wire needed. So that says, as you know, you gotta have a wire which is thick enough to hold this, because if the wire's not thick enough, it may fall and break, okay. So that's easy enough to think about. So then how do we turn that into a physics principle and actually calculate it? Well, that one is one which is based on the relationship between stress and strain. And that relationship says stress is equal to something which is characteristic of the material called Young's modulus times the strain. Stress is Y times the strain. So then what is stress? Stress is the force exerted divided by the area, the cross-sectional area over which it's exerted. And that in turn then equals this Young's modulus number, which is dependent upon the material, multiplied by the strain. And the strain is the change in length divided by whatever the original length was. Okay, so are we starting to get someplace now? Mm, it would seem like it, because what we're trying to do is to find the diameter of the wire. How does the diameter of the wire fit into all this? The diameter of the wire, not the length, but the diameter of it. It fits into it from the area here, the cross-sectional area. So here's what we can say. Next, out of all this, we'll say that F over A is the stress. And since we know a maximum stress that was given to us, let's say that we're going to find out what the maximum stress will be. Using the maximum stress, we'll find out what the area has to be in order to make that support. So then, the other thing we know is, of course, from geometry, if this area of this cable is expressed in terms of its diameter, it's pi d squared over 4. So fine, can we then churn our way through that? If we do, we find that diameter d is the square root of 4 times the weight over pi times the maximum stress. And so, what does that make altogether? Well, do we know the weight? Yeah, it's, um, the weight of this is 40 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. So we know that, and the maximum stress, he tells us, is 200 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square meter. So we know all this stuff. So we can then calculate D and find out what D is. And it turns out that D is 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. One58 millimeters. So what's a millimeter? This was little tiny little thing. And so uh, 1.58 millimeters, not very much. So a fairly thin wire will do this. So if you're trying to hang this from like a picture wire, you'll need something that'll help. Of course, picture wires are graded in terms of how much weight they can hold. So you gotta worry about the weight and conversion to pounds, all that good stuff. Oh, there's a B part. The B part says that what will happen is that the wire will stretch because it is elastic after all. Not really very much elastic. You can't stretch it with your hands, but it's elastic to some degree at least. And you can find this out by saying uh, the delta L over L0 
That's this stuff. And so this would be F over A max, max stress, divided by Young's modulus Y. And Young's modulus turns out to be given in the problem. So we can solve this and say delta L equals L0 times all that other stuff. And that turns out to be 4.29 millimeters. Does that seem like a lot? Well, actually, this was 1.58 millimeters, wasn't it? Because a milli is a 10 to the minus 3. So 1.58 millimeters, uh, 4.29 millimeters, about three times the diameter of the wire, and the wire is pretty thin. So that's not a whole lot. So they sort of pass the reasonability tests. Kind of makes sense. Okay, good.